Hey there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism. As usual, I am Max Kobe, and with me is our friend Rob from Deflating Atheism. How you doing, Rob? All right, man. Good, good, good to hear it. Well, we've had some uh, interesting explorations this week of, uh, of what goes on in atheist land. Um, <laughs> Not much reaction except butthurt rage over our last one, where we talked pretty openly about how uh, the skeptic feminist mesh and, and and the killing that took place there. And, yes, uh, very unhappy that I suggested that either of us would suggest that atheistic nihilism, um, the nihilism, so-called skepticism, skepticism especially because you can be skeptical of anything may just have something to do with a mentally unbalanced man thinking that he is the moral arbiter of all right and wrong. Yes. Anyway, and, and apparently it's wrong to suggest that that may be a problem. Um, uh, just, just hammering uh, kids over the head with this notion that there is no right and wrong. There is no objective right and wrong. There is no objective purpose or meaning in life uh, because reasons. Uh, maybe this doesn't just have a, a beneficial effects. Yeah. yeah, I was, again, I'll repeat that I was an atheist, and I do mean a real atheist, right? Not just, un, you know, confused and not interested in God or what, angry, any of that. I really, I literally could, didn't understand why people believed in God, and I admit that. Um, so some of my anger sometimes is just my own frustration, but uh, uh, I think I mentioned this, but because when I was an atheist, I wrestled hard with moral questions. And I always kept looking, you know, because I had a moral sense. I just didn't know what to do with it. And I just found when I was an atheist, there was a great deal of vacuity in any moral conversation. You know, the best I could ever come up with is try and be nice to people. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to be nice. All sorts of uh, uh, kind of vapid, sentimental formulations like that, you know. Be cool with people, yeah. And the it problem makes, is, that it makes my heart swell with pride to see my fellow man prosper. It's like shove it up your ass, yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 not it's trite cliches, and unfortunately, what it does is, uh, it, maybe you have a natural empathetic sense, and maybe you have a natural ability to just be kind to people and and all that. But not everybody has that. Yeah, and yeah. In fact, some people are sociopaths, and sociopaths are really good at being nice. Super nice, in fact, and really good, friendly people. But then they'll, you know, stab you in the back and cut your heart out and eat it and smile. You know, um, uh, one of the great problems is, I mean, it's a, it surprises me because I didn't used to think only about the moral issues. Um, and that's because I, I, I find just saying on moral questions, well, go to the Bible, that'll have your answer. I've never found that sufficient, actually. Yeah, I know some Christians just heard that and gasped, but really, if you don't have a good grounding on how to read the Bible, you can also pull almost anything you want out of that. And this this is why we have systems of religious thought and systems of ethics based on the idea that there are ultimate values. Yeah. From what I've been able to see, um, it's now 2017, and even though my whole life secularists have been saying they'll come up with a workable universal moral and ethical code, they never have. It's still 2017, and I'm still waiting. Yeah, I, I, I think it's important to emphasize that there are two separate questions here. One is, uh, do you have a ground for for ethics, for objective values, and what are the particulars of those of those? Because I, I think atheists can you know confuse it. They say, oh well, you know, we used to say slavery is okay, so therefore, anytime somebody tries to codify what right and wrong is, yeah, it may very well uh, uh, be an error. But you still need that 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 ground of, of right and wrong, and just because someone says it does not make it objective. Even if you carve it into a uh, into stone tablets, it does not make it objective. But you still need that basis for objective right and wrong. You do. Um, I, I I'll assert now that I believe atheists will never come up with a consistent and predictable moral or ethical system because they don't really ultimately believe in morals. You can't really believe in morals when you're an atheist, or you just think it's all social. Yeah. Um, and ethics, man, even that is a strain. Um, the closest I've seen is like, you know, the ethics of doing honest business transactions if you're like some kind of libertarian. But even that, 
I, it, it, uh, the earliest study of ethics I know of comes from Aristotle. There may be others earlier, I don't know, but the most complete guy to look into ethics was Aristotle. Not a Christian, not a religious man, still said you had to posit God and certain ultimate right and wrong ideas, or you can have no ethics. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't think any ethicist since then has found different. You find a few who say different, but no atheist has ever come, a uh, philosopher or ethicist has ever come up with a workable system that I've seen. Uh, secular humanism has sure turned into a joke. All right, that was a lot of talking, but what we're going to be doing here, what we're going to be doing here today is talking about some, uh, I'll call it the online atheist follies. Yeah. I may start doing this on a regular basis and just ask people to send me stuff because I might start doing a daily where I just do 10, 15 minutes talking about the latest I've seen in atheist land. Um, now, but let's now, Max, I, I know you'll be horrified to hear this, but there are actually uh, uh, people out there on YouTube land who uh, actually watch our videos and criticize us. I, I don't know if you were aware of this. <laughs> but they um, Do atheists talk about us ever? Yes, they do. They do. They do. They do. And, and, and uh, I think they accuse us of being ranty and rambly. <laughs> and so we're here, to, we're here to we're here to warn you, uh, steal yourselves because we are we are doubling down on the rantiness. Actually, tonight. they might get lucky this week because I'm just tired and I'm beyond <laughs> the ability to be shocked by these people. Because here's the thing, I know we're going to show some nasty stuff from that we find in atheist land, and it's not really bottom feeding because these are big forums with lots of people, and I don't see any you know mods coming into any of them just to tell people to cool out. Once yeah. you accept that morality, frankly, is just a matter of opinion and is all relative, as far as I can tell, there's no bottom. You'll, yeah. um, whether it comes to sex, whether it comes to drugs, whether it comes to violence, there's no bottom, as far as I can see, when you make it all relative. But let's, let's look at a few things. I'm going to start. We mentioned Godless Engineer in the, in the video title, or at least I did. Um, so, uh, because he has made at least one video attacking me in particular, I think. He may have gone after us both, I'm not sure. Oh, he's gone after me. He's gone after me, certainly. Uh, accusing me of lying, though I can't think of anything I lied about, can't specify. I generally don't pay attention to atheist videos addressed to us unless somebody clues me in that they've said something real. But let's well, go ahead. Uh, uh, Godless Engineer actually did a... a, a fundraising podcast where, where he uh, where he did a little viewing party on one of my videos and it was a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood yeah thanks for that bro you know oh nice well okay give give those people some more money because after all um, <laughs> no matter what you think of abortion it is clearly nothing but a clump of cells until it's at least three years old and so <laughs> you should be able to kill it right right you don't even have to take a strong position on abortion to know there's crazy opinions out there. I'm going to go ahead and start screen sharing here with some images we were lucky enough to get. By the way, I'm going to mention this. Uh, this can be, we're going to show a couple shots here from the Godless Engineer uh, uh, a Facebook group. God, Godless Engineer has a Facebook group, you see. Um, and here, here, here's uh, some stuff that one of his users posted. Uh, quite a few pictures. Going to get about appropriate sex education for children. Now, uh, we've intentionally blurred some of these. Uh, by the way, I'm not in Godless Engineers group. The Escaping Atheism team has 10 volunteers now, plus we have friends and stringers who just send us stuff. Yes, atheists, you're being observed. You might want to keep it in mind. Um, we are observing you, and it's not just us, but uh, in any case, here we find on Godless Engineer uh, uh, a number of screenshots, one of our friends, not even a Christian, by the way, he's not a Christian, the guy who got these for us. Um, uh, look at this, look at these photos. Now these photos, uh, again, we've blurred them. These are naked pictures. There's the first one up on the upper left there. It's a naked booby, not that big of a deal. Every kid's probably seen mom's booby, but now, next one, uh, the, some of this is from uh, a Norwegian state TV, apparently. Um, uh, and there's a lot of text here I'm not going to... Uh, are, these, uh, are these mannequins that we see blurred out, or are they real people? No, no these are people. These are real people. So, they're, you know, penis, uh, you know, woman's crotch. Um, 
explanation of explicit opinion. Um, juicy details. There she is jerking off. Uh, probably we're going to see a, we would see a semen shot if we kept watching that. And look at some of the you know the commentary that goes with it from the Godless Engineer group. A very typical atheist form from what I can see. Here it is. All you know specific stuff about semen. Uh, when woman, you know, there's all this stuff that's very explicit. And there, here we have commentary. Personally, I think this is brilliant. Alternative to teaching abstinence teaches yeah. kids about their bodies, um, helps kids identify sex, which could help them recognize consensual assault, rape, and molestation and make them less of a victim. Teaches kids not to be ashamed of the naked body and their bits. Well, so it's all about erections and jerking off and various sexual positions and playing with semen and uh, this is all for children. Yeah. Um, and and the interesting thing here is is that you could make a case that sh showing the kids the basics of sex and how it works early on is not a bad thing. I have. My kids knew the basics of sex uh, when they were young. But not like this, not, yeah. not, not this kind of explicit. Uh, uh, if you look into studies, children actually tend to find images like this disturbing. Although these days on the internet with porn everywhere, we're not even sure what the effect of that is on kids. Exactly, but exactly. This, about previous studies have shown repeatedly children are generally disturbed when they see sexual pictures. Um, and uh, let's 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 even go out of the out of the Bible, out of the any holy books, and let's just go into uh, anthropology. I've read about stuff in anthropology. Most societies they find that children are are disturbed by witnessing explicit sex acts, and they don't like it, and it disturbs them. Um, and that's not just a religious thing; it appears to be natural and innate in humans for humans to want to encourage keep kids away from sex until they're old enough you know know the basics everybody knew the basics hell if you grew up on a farm and saw a cow and a bull you knew how it worked or a chicken and a rooster or whatever but um i don't know this is what atheist land looks like to me obsession with sex obsession with porn um and no thought of any kind of moral standards of any kind yeah yeah sexualizing i, I yeah. also by extension, mm -hmm. not, not to uh, cut you off, I'm sorry, but kind of what, what outraged people so much about the uh, whole uh, Bill Nye sex junk thing is that, is that Bill Nye was a children's entertainment figure, and here he was ki kind of uh, pied pipering them in into this whole weird uh, uh, perversion almost, you know? And 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 people say, oh well, Bill Nye is just here. He wants to educate kids. No, well, the show is rated NC, is rated a TV fourteen or whatever. It's obviously not for little kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing that really gets this is, uh, I too, I notice how they mention that you know it's an alternative to teaching abstinence. Does anybody here know what real abstinence education is? I don't think they do. Um, <laughs> Because while there was some con controversy over something called abstinence-only education, where you don't give them sexual education, in reality, most who, the vast majority of religious or non-religious, for that matter, who preach abstinence aren't saying you shouldn't be educated on sex. Yeah. It's a very small minority of, children, of Christian parents or any of them that would just not give the basics of sex. I've even been in, in, in fundamentalist Christian, you know, Bible thumper homes, and they are, the, the kids aren't stupid about sex. Um, so, I mean, even this is part of the, I think, part of the atheist narrative that we're all oppressed by uh, religious morality. And once we get rid of that religious morality, uh, you know, the whole world will be a better place. Yeah, well, I, I think it's because the abstinence only was was something that was you know alternative to the kind of state issue uh, Planned Parenthood approved uh, uh, sexual curriculum. Yep, I got a couple of these. I'm going to mention, by the way, that uh, I might as well just say this is the Godless Engineering Group on Facebook. From what I can tell, the he calls himself HMFIC, which I, I uh, really see John, that. John Gleason, I think, is his name. I think that's the godless engineer. He goes by HMFIC, which, as far as I can tell, means head motherfucker in charge. 
And then her his assistant is a Kathleen Kate, Caitlin Clo, who's abbreviated H B I C. I'm gonna guess H, bitch, you know, yeah. head bitch in charge. Because see, when you're atheist, you have to swear just to prove your I don't know. You have to prove something. Um, by the way, get over it, atheists. Uh, <laughs> well, they, 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 were, they were just they were just the nerds in high school. Now they have to now they have to prove their bad. Well, I'm gonna just now I'm gonna assume John Gleason approves of this sort of message, and Caitlin Clo does. Others listed: Amy Price, Ford, Bill Young, Chris Cowling, Carrie Gall, Gill. Nathan Chaplinsky, Sally Tebrook, Simon James. I want to know if you guys are all okay with that. I mean, maybe you are. Maybe you are. Maybe you should do a film on, uh, you know, films of death and corpses, too, so that children can learn that death is a part of life. That, that, that might be good, too. I mean, I, I don't know what you do with people who think this way. And they aren't just bringing it up for discussion, but celebrating it. And celebrating it alongside really stupid caricatures of how religious people think. I yeah. thanks very much, Godless Engineer, for the sex ed lesson. Um, <laughs> uh, my son already knows all the basics. Thanks, my very Christian son, by the way, um, who's believed in God since the first time I asked him. Um, but whatever. Now. I don't know. That's Godless Engineer. He's made some videos about me. I haven't bothered even looking at because um, I yeah, doubt uh, he's anything to he say. A, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He has a, a very infuriating way of arguing where he'll just straw man your position, where you'll make like an offhanded observation, and then he'll try to like put some pre unsaid premises into it, so you're so you're making an argument that you never made. I've you know, some, like, like he did a video recently attacking uh, 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 anti Jesus mythicist or anti Jesus mythicist. So I guess I guess he's a Jesus mythicist. But yeah, uh, somebody said yes. Yeah, Stalin uh, advocated this position as part of his as part of his uh, you know atheist indoctrination, which is absolutely true. And so, of course, Godless Engineer says, "Oh, well, because Stalin said it, therefore it's not true." It's like, no, that's not the argument anyone is making. But he'll oh, argue. Help, that way. help me out here. What was it that Stalin said, thought, or said? What? Well, well, no, the, the militant atheism pro, uh, uh, kind of campaign of, of the USSR taught that that Jesus was not historical. Oh, right. Uh, so. The the and League of the Militant Godless, the League of the Militant Godless, the um, yeah, uh, the Soviet group that Stalin founded. Yeah, they were called the League of the Militant Godless. If you read Borden Painter's book, The New Atheist Denial of History, he shows how some of the uh, of that's you know how a lot of the people like um, I, I look for my interview with Borden Painter. Look for his book, The New Atheist Denial of History. Um, and he documents how the new atheists, people like Sam Harris, Chris Hitch, Christopher Hitchens, and them, use the same kind of techniques as the League of the Militant Godless, which yeah. is a Soviet group. And actually, I'm also reading a book. In fact, I'm going to put up a, a flash to both of these books, if you don't mind. And pointing out, pointing out parallels between modern atheists and Soviet era atheists is an entirely fair point, because it makes you wonder what they're, what they're leading up to, you know. Which we're going to do later on, but yes, uh, it, it's entirely fair to point out that yes, Stalin, as part of his propaganda cam campaign, advocated this idea that Jesus was mythical, as do modern day atheists. The argument is not therefore uh, it's wrong because Stalin said it. That's not the argument, but that's exactly the kind of counter argument that uh, godless engineer would would try to marshal. You know. I want to mention a couple of books here that I want to point to people at, and then we're going to look at some screenshots you brought. Um, I'm going to turn on. No, oh, I already had it on. Sorry. Hey, we need uh, more resources. If anybody wants to put something in the tip jar or hit us on Patreon, I would like to get better video equipment, better streaming equipment. I'm going to start with a couple of book recommendations. The New Atheist Denial of History by Borden Painter. It is overpriced, uh, not at the author's desire, um, but it goes into the League of the Militant Godless and how uh, also new atheists, modern atheists in the of the Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, Michael Shermer uh, away do tend to use the historical revisionist techniques of Holocaust denialists and lift yeah. stuff out of things like 
materials from the League of the Militant Godless. By the way, I'm I'm still looking to track this down. I want to put this in the air. If anybody's got old issues of National Review around, um, I've read stories of uh, atheist propaganda campaign, including I'm pretty sure the script that Heath, the guy we did a couple three weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago, is using a 50 year old script he got from yeah. the League of the Books and Godless. I'm pretty sure he is. Um, another book I want to recommend though is called The New Atheist Threat. Um, which I've also brought up here. don't know if you can all see it. Um, this is by a C.J. Whirleman. I am trying to get him for an interview. Now, he may be mad at me because I kind of unloaded at him. He's got a, he, he likes to bash the Catholic Church a lot, and I gave him grief for that. Um, but this is, but, but I'm hoping to get him on for an interview anyway. Because uh, mm -hmm. this is a good book, and I recommend it to everybody. Uh, C.J. Whirleman is an atheist, was an atheist, is an atheist, still is an atheist. Yes. Um, Still has some fairly shallow, in my view, uh, opinions about religion, um, and spends an inordinate amount of time defending Muslims in this book, um, uh, which I think some of his defense is fair and some of it, eh. But he also reveals in here how Christopher Hitchens is a plagiarist, and he's got multiple sources to show it, and some of the stuff in books like God is Not Great verbatim out of 1920s, 1930s Soviet atheist propaganda. Like yeah. verbatim, they caught him. Um, they caught him after his death, but they still caught him. Um, this is yeah. actually news to me, but obviously uh, 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 Hitchens in his youth certainly rubbed shoulders with, with old school Marxists, so that, that would not yeah. get yeah. his attention, you know. He called himself a Trotskyist, okay, which yeah. is another way of saying a, a dissident communist. Um, this is a good book. Uh, CJ is very left wing, and and that's fine. But he he does a great job of dismantling uh, very popular atheists and their talking points. And yeah, catches out Sam Harris lying, catches out Christopher Hitchens lying. It's a good book. I hope CJ will yeah. still talk to me. He's a speaker on the atheist circuit, so he may or may not. But. I mentioned this just because you, you brought up the League of the Militant Godless and the Soviet uh, uh, anti-Christian, anti-religious campaigns, and guess what? We have multiple books from multiple credible sources now all saying, yes, this is happening, and this is, this is common. CJ's view is, just so you know, in this book, is that there's atheists who just don't believe in God, and then there's the new atheists, and that they're a very dangerous threat. They're ideological atheists. Yeah. yeah, and he goes into all the ideological stuff. So it's a good book, and it relates to a lot of what we're discussing here. A lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, atheist historical revisionism uh, predates uh, the Soviet Union, like the the notion that the Catholic Church uh, somehow preached that the uh, that the Earth was flat or stuff like that, or that Christians burned down the Library of Alexandria. I mean, a lot a lot of these were were revived by Carl Sagan, but they go back to the 19th century, you know. Yeah, a lot of common modern atheist talking points in the, in the, in 2017 can still be traced directly, directly. Well, they come out of some of these books we're talking about from Hitchens and them, all the way back to Marxist talking points. And a shocking number of libertarians, by the way, atheist libertarians, I find, will repeat those Marxist talking points unironically as if they just believe them. Or is it no, that's just, why it's, so it's, it's risable that they that they say that they're forging this path to the future when they they trot out these uh kind of um, musty old uh, talking points from the 19th century. You know, Lit almost practically everything everything from the New Atheist movement dates to the 19th century. It's it's completely a uh, uh, you know 19th even century. Their view of science, even their view of science, it's like yes. they haven't moved anywhere from Sigmund Freud. And I'm not saying Sigmund yes. Freud was brilliant and an atheist. He was both, uh, but it's like they haven't moved from there. A lot yeah. of what Freud said and a lot of these other 19th century people said isn't scientific and isn't true. What are you going to do? Okay, so let's look at some more screenshots. Uh, let's look at one of yours, and then I'm going to give some a uh, so, uh, shout-out to our Facebook group. Um, uh, you got some, uh, you yeah, got some me, screenshots. Let me set this up because, uh, 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 about two weeks ago, I made this video about, about the Facebook page, uh, Atheist Republic. And it was, it was a kind of whimsical video. I just meant to like trigger the atheist. But while I was getting screenshots of this Facebook page, 
I got some other things I thought were kind of illuminating. And okay. so I, they, they would not have been appropriate for this, again, kind of lighthearted, insubstantial video I was making. But uh, uh, I think it might behoove us to, uh, to view these now. All right, I'll bring this one up. This is by one Kieran Anderson, who will probably claim they're harassing him, but whatever. We're not. We're just it's a public Facebook posting. Easily found. Kieran Anderson. This is what what atheist group is this from, by the way, Rob? This is Atheist Republic. This is Atheist oh, Republic. Atheist Republic. A high Atheist Republic. We dare you to have us on for a chat sometime. We dare you to, Atheist Republic. Uh, we will even be try to be nice to you and just joke with you. But anyway, okay, well, Kieran Anderson, huh? This is atheist stupid. This is just how silly and stupid they're they are. Atheist stupid. That's right. Kieran Anderson says, this is just an example of how backwards Christianity is a time uh, is at times. What's he talking about? Do you remember? Uh, so he gives the example here. Yeah, okay. Um, there was a time there, when I witnessed the most mystical thing at five years old. The sun was shining through while rain fell. I had never seen it before or not that I can remember. Anyway, I asked an adult who was an avid Christian what it meant, and they said, the devil and his wife are fighting, slash the devil and God are fighting. I was a dumb, I was a dumb kid, actually, and believed this for a few months, until I saw a documentary on this very thing. Lod logic and reasoning trump stupid beliefs every day. Of course, you have to have some sort of a high-flown uh, uh, proclamation at the end. Uh, you're an idiot. <laughs> I, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the second part. You didn't highlight it, but I want to read it. That I'm gonna read it as as Kieran here. That and when I was around seven, my mother, aunt, and uncle convinced me that I was stolen from the hospital and I wasn't my parents' son. They did this for about ten minutes until I started to cry and then told me the truth. Looking back, it was the best best prank they pulled on me, and it's incredibly funny. Um, so, uh, so Kieran, the joke. There's no possibility here about God and the devil are fighting. But no that's, that's a really was joking with you either. Huh? Yeah. I, I actually was unaware of this until I took a little, uh, there was a little online quiz and it says they can determine what part of the United States you're from based on, on your kind of uh, 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 dialect and what kind of uh, idioms you use. Uh -huh. And when, when, it's, when it's raining, when the sun is out, everyone I know just always call that a sun shower. But there are parts of the country, I think in, in various parts of the South, where they say the devil is fighting with his wife or, or the cow is jumping over the moon or something. Just silly, bizarre expressions that mean uh, uh, it's, it's, it's raining when the sun is out. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's... This kid, and with, with, with the kind of uh, knuckle-headed autistic literal, literalism that seems to be endemic to atheists, uh, he thought it meant God was actually, uh, uh, I mean, the devil was actually fighting with his wife. So, well, I, and then I, he holds this against Christianity. Yep, holds it against Christianity. I tell you, um, as a dad, um, and as a, I know a lot about autism, believe me, um, I immediately wondered if this was an autistic child. Mm -hmm. um, because, or if he was a t autistic as a child, or if he is still now. Because this is the sort of thing parents will tell children and will usually smile and they'll know it's a joke. Now, there is, or, or they'll eventually let the kid on the joke, right? I mean, I'll admit it, and every parent I know, Christian or not, will play little mind games with their kids and tell them silly things. Yeah. Uh, responsible ones will usually then clue them in or wait for them to figure it out for themselves, like Santa Claus, by the way, who's a different thing completely. Um, and I can explain why Santa Claus is different if anybody wants to hear it. But I honestly wonder if he's autistic because there is a high overlap between autism and athe atheism. Yeah. I just had a talk with Sarah Salvi Dr. Sarah Salviander about this the other night. You'll find it on my channel. Uh, she's autistic, and she was atheist for a long time. And, you know, she acknowledges, as I have mentioned and others have, there's a strong overlap between atheism and autism. Now, most autistics are not atheists, but they, they're, they're disproportionately found there. And uh, Dr. Sarah did seem to like my theory that it's because of a hyper-focus issue. I know in dealing with autistics, sometimes you can't joke with them because they will take things very literally. Yeah. Or Maybe. just like abstract uh, thinking in general. Uh, I mean, the autistics kind of tend towards more towards the concrete rather than the abstract, you know. Or, or also, yeah. also kind of empathetic reasoning. 
you know, where, where, where we have to imagine, uh, uh, you know, other minds besides our own. I, I still have to think of the sadness of the mind that at five years old, here's, you know, in a sunshiny rain shower or whatever, the devil and his wife are fighting. They think that's a completely literal truth and they yeah. keep that. And that's a, a theme I've seen with most modern atheists. They get educated in religion as a child, usually not very well. Yes. They remember things as a child, and they continue with that childlike understanding. Yes, yes. And, you know, I remember having this conversation with my son when I was, when, uh, you know, he's a, he's a teenager and he's lost interest in religion. And that's fine. That's not uncommon. Um, but I, I did remind him and he did stop and think and, and say, yeah, I'll remember that. I say, you remember all the stuff from church when you were a kid, right? He stopped going around the age of 12, I think, or 13 after confirmation, not too often. And I just said, listen, and this is something other parents should remember too, I think. Listen, you, you, you're, you're down on the church. You don't really believe you're not into it. But I want you to remember something. Now, I'm not going to browbeat you, but I want you to remember, son, you have a child's understanding. And there's plenty of things he's, you know, in his late teens now, there's plenty of things you used to think wrong 10 years ago that you can even laugh at now. Yeah. Remember, because you have a child's understanding of the church. You have a child's understanding of, of theology, of religion. He's like, yeah, you know what? That's a good point. Yeah. Because he's not a dumb kid. That doesn't mean he plunged right back into church and is reading his Bible every day. But he's like, my son acknowledged that's a good point. Yes. Apparently, nobody can point that out to these guys either. Let's see, you got us. Hmm? That's one of the uh, kind of the uh, points uh, Jordan Peterson goes back to that I actually kind of admire him for. He says to his college students, he says, you're 19 years old. You don't know anything. <laughs> Seven years ago, you were 12. You think you, think you, you have a handle on it all? Exactly. <laughs> now, here's another one. Okay. Um, this, this is the more this is the more vile uh, malicious one this is not this is not a laughing matter here no it isn't um you want to read it this is from okay. evans larose this is also from uh, atheist republic also from atheist republic again i i did not think it would be appropriate for my for my silly little video so so i i, I screenshotted it anyway and, and put put it in the vault so evans larose says i would actually fight to take their rights away, rights being uh, their being religious people. In so many fucking backwards religious country, atheists are killed for not believing in these fairy tales. I would actually love a law that makes it so everyone has to either abandon their religion or die. The only way to make people rational human beings is to eradicate religion from this world. And he got 15 likes on that. 15 likes, too, but... I, yeah, but atheism is not a, an ideology and it's not a hate movement, right? Yeah. I'm going to repeat this phrase that I'm going to keep using until it penetrates. I don't care who, how many people say I'm hyperbolic. Atheism is a hate movement. Yes. It is an ideological hate movement to its core. If you're sitting there saying, but I don't believe in God and I'm not like this. Yeah, well, you're just a pretty normal person who's decided you're not interested or not convinced of, of the existence of God. Okay. Yeah, if you're well, all curious, we can at least give you some more backing into why it's not stupid to believe in God. But anyway. But we as long as you uh, put think to yourself, have I ever put forward the talking point that religious people – or impediments to social or technological or scientific progress? Have I ever called religious people religious Have I ever done anything to dehumanize or belittle religious people? And if you continue beating these drums, what do you expect this to lead up to? Yeah, I mean, really, I see 15 likes there. There's six replies. We don't know if anybody okay. shot him down or gave him a hard time. Yeah. I'm betting not. I'd like to know if the admins of Atheist Republic uh, uh, they, have banned, any they banned me, by the way, but they'll they'll let this slide. Yeah. Well, and there's the thing. It's not like it's he can't express the idea, but I'd like to know from Atheist Republic, as a former member of your community, a former atheist of many years, read all your best artists, can I, authors. Can I go in here and can I propose that we should make atheism illegal and that atheism should be, you know, a capital offense? Uh, you must give up your atheism or be killed. Um, would you find that acceptable? I doubt you would. I wouldn't either. Although there are days <laughs> like this. 
about my child who's always believed in God. And by the way, it's normal for children to believe in God um, scientifically. And children can tell the difference between God and Sky Fairy's imaginary friends and Santa yes. Claus just fine. Thank you. They know the difference. They know God is the thing ultimately running the universe. Um, it's a normal thing for kids to believe. Um, and they don't lose it. Most of them don't lose it when they uh, mature. Um, I, I, I want to argue with this guy, but, but I don't, because it's like if you can't see that atheism has become a hate ideology that is based on trying to control what people think, I don't know, because this, yeah. this gets by in polite conversation on Atheist Republic. It also gets by in polite conversation in lots of atheist meetings and a lot of atheist chat rooms and a lot of atheist forums elsewhere online. Not only have I hung out in a lot of these, but again, we know a lot of people who do. A lot of former atheists or people who aren't atheists at all who just go into these groups. Atheists, you might want to get used to being observed. Yeah. This is all public internet stuff. And, and that's a, as, long huh? as, as long as you put forward the notion that religious people are impediments to progress, no matter how you phrase that, uh, the camel has already gotten his nose under the tent, you know? Because That's right. If, if religious people are, and by the way, that's another style, that's more Stalinist propaganda. And Stalin used as a pretext to uh, imprison, torture, and execute uh, religious clerics and believers. That same, that same kind of rhetoric is now being used by the modern atheists. And they keep beating these drums and they keep ramping up their outrage. Why should we believe it will turn out any different this time, you know? That's exactly correct. We really, as Christians, uh, we should be asking, are we at risk of our lives from people like the readers at Atheist Republic? Yes. Are we in actual danger of having, our, uh, 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 of having you take our rights, of having people assault us, of having people take our children away? Um, and by the way, if you say you're just being... Yes. Huh? As Daniel Dennett advocates. And, and, and by the way, if, you know... I, <laughs> Don't just say you're being paranoid. It's too late. Uh, atheists have asked for recognition from society. Atheists have forums, publications, uh, meetings. They've even been declared a, re a religious group that has a right to go in and recruit in prisons and schools. Yes. Uh, by the way, historically, the League of the Militant Godless also tended to go into prisons to preach atheism. They did this in Cambodia, they did this in Russia, they did it in China, they've done it in other places. They will go into prisons, they will preach atheist stuff like this to the prisoners, and then when they get power, release the prisoners. And what often happens is, this has happened in multiple countries, those prisoners who've gone on to burn down churches, murder, rape, and kill religious people, nuns, monks, priests, this happened in China, it happened in Cambodia, it happened in Russia. All people talking exactly like Evans LaRose. Yes. Does the atheist community have any responsibility to its own image and to what it puts out and what it allows to be put out? Um, and I, wanna, I want any atheist to ask that because I think no one in the atheist community has a conscience. In fact, I'll say this again. The atheist community has no conscience, and that's because atheists have no conscience. And if those sound like harsh words, tell me what your conscience is, editors of Atheist Republic. Why do you put up with stuff like this? And does, did they ever get any pushback? I want to ask another question of, of Evans LaRose and anybody at Atheist Republic. Copious science says that it's normal for humans to believe in God and the spiritual. The, is there anything ethical about beating that belief out of them? Yeah. And treating them like, like mental incompetence. Is, is that ethical? I'd like an atheist to tell me if that's ethical. I'd also like uh, someone from Atheist Republic to tell me that if my child tells me he's interested in God and wants to go to church, uh, am I committing child abuse to take him? Uh, I'd really like to hear those answers. I don't know if we'll get an answer from Atheist Republic, but they do read us, so uh, we'll see. All right, anything you want to say about old Evans? More you want to say about old Evans here? No, no, I think, I think uh -huh. this is... This has been our little atheist house of horrors here, you know. Tech, typical modern atheist is what I would say. All right, I've got some goodies. We have a praise for you. New atheist, same as the old atheist, yes. Pretty much. I don't know. See, I remember atheists back from the 1990s and earlier, and we were not this crazy.
Yeah. And we were not this fucking nasty. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's not like that anymore. Okay, let's move on. I want to give a shout out to Stan Tarrant, who's uh, one of our regulars in the Escaping Atheism Facebook group. By the way, we do have one. There it is, called Escaping Atheism. Atheists are not particularly welcome, by the way, and most of them just get the boot. Um, uh, truly curious atheists may come in, but we're looking for anybody who's uh, just blowing smoke. Um, uh, real, real inquirers who just want to talk, we will talk to. All right, so Stan gave us this image, and he got it from a place called Friendly Atheist. Oh, uh, I have a little rant about him, yeah. The Friendly Atheist. I find that friendly and nice atheists aren't very friendly and aren't very nice. No, that's... I've been following uh, Herman Metma or whatever his name is. He is anything. There, I don't even see how he calls himself the friendly atheist. It's just, it's just the same hate and the same uh, 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 straw manning of religious people as you'll find anywhere else. I'll tell you one thing, one little fascinating story about that, too. I used to be followed by a guy called the, I think he was called the nice atheist or the kindly atheist or something like that. Um, he went by that. And then I noticed he started following me, and he followed me for months, and he started liking some of my posts and some of the things I was seeing. And I've never interacted with him, but then I saw one day he changed his name to The Nice Liberal, and he continues to like and sometimes retweet our stuff on atheism. In other words, it's possible for an atheist to realize he's gotten into something stupid yeah. without turning into a crazed fundamentalist Christian, because he didn't. He's still a nice liberal. And I look at his wall once in a while. He does seem nicer now that he's not an atheist. Yeah. But uh, um, okay. So anyway, Stan Tarrant gave us this that he got from the friendly atheist. I don't know who Ron Ramft is who said it, but let's go ahead and read this out loud. Typical atheist. He says, "Until American realize, and that include until Americans realize, and that includes the friendly atheist." that this woman was taken to a church to be intellectually lobotomized and brainwashed into believing in an imaginary being, which, by the way, is defined as a mental illness according to DSM-5. That's by, by the way, uh, uh, should we just put the back story is that, is that there was a, a tragic story where, where a woman accidentally left her, car, her kids in the car and they died or something? Yes, that's what the backstory is. A Christian woman accidentally leaves her kids in the car and they roast. Um, such tragedies do happen. What's disgusting is the way now atheists want to bring blame that on the Christianity. Well, you know, that's fine. Then I want to know every time a, a, a non-religious person did this too. Yeah. Um, but here he is. He's saying that uh, the problem is this woman was taken to church to be lobotomized. That's why she forgot her kids in the car. Literally um, lobotomized. Yeah, she says this This is mental illness according to the DSM-5, which is a Diagnostics and Standards Manual of the American Psychological Association. Not a true statement, by the way, not entirely anyway. She, he says, it's inflicted on small children intentionally. You mean like my child who asked to go to church? Yeah, okay. Um, it is a form of child abuse and is both generational and cyclic. The idea that believing in an imaginary God is benign and a religious belief isn't harmful is not true, as shown by scientific studies, citation needed, that children who are indoctrinated into religion before they start school become less likely to do well in school. Citation needed, we don't believe you, especially if you got that from an atheist forum. Anyway, he goes on and says, I don't care if you call your delusion God, Yahweh, Shiva, Allah, or Fred, or try to justify it by calling it a religious belief, it can, can and does great harm. No one under the age of 18 should ever be allowed inside a religious institution. They are more damaging than going to a strip club uh, or smoking marijuana. Yes, going to church twice a year to show off your new clothes and saying you believe in God may seem like it is harmless, but these people also send their kids to expose them to religion, but that is when the real harm is done. And these zealots go on to become like Kim Davis, Mike Pence, Timothy McVeigh, Dylan Roof. He was an agnostic. <laughs> Timothy McVeigh was an agnostic. We need to point yeah. that out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he was. He went on um, record as saying that he's an agnostic, yes. In fact, he got angry. People tried calling him a Christian, and he said no. Yeah. Um, uh, and this poor woman goes along with Dylan, these. Dylan, oh, by the way, I keep, seeing, I keep seeing atheists mention Dylan Roof. I have never seen any evidence uh, Dylan Roof ever claimed to be a Christian. But well, I, 
it's just, it's just an understood. I guess I guess because he's he's southern, and they just automatically assume that if someone's from the south, they're a Christian. I guess. Question from for this guy too. Okay, so what do you say about Jim Jones, the the Guyana massacre, Jonestown guy who killed all those people down in Jonestown? Forswear for religion and became forswore religion and became serious atheist. By the way, sky daddies um, yes. and imaginary friends, and then he killed a bunch of people. There's also Jeffrey Dahmer. Look him up. The serial killer cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer. D H D A H M E R. Jeffy Dahmer. I remember him well. Um, and not only was he clearly an atheist, but he said, "Because there's no God over me, I I can do whatever I want," which more than one killer has said. Leading to the obvious question, okay, Mr. Atheist, um, this poor woman is the same as, I don't know, as any killer. By the way, I don't know that Mike Pence needs to be listed there with serial killers, but whatever. Um, uh, uh, this poor woman who made a mistake and left her kids in the car and they roasted, it's all on the religion. But why is, why is lack of religiosity not a problem then yeah. when a serial killer goes off and kills a bunch of people? By the way, while, while we're talking about uh, teenage spree shooters, and you mentioned Dylan Roof, how about that other Dylan, Dylan Klebold? Didn't he ask uh, the kids if they believed in God before pulling the trigger? I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm sorry, but people who don't believe in God or disbelieve in God or hate religion often get violent. And I want to know who in the atheist community is going to do something about that. My experience with the atheist community is that no one will take any accountability of any kind because that's an atheist character trait. They won't really take accountability for what they say. They might, this guy might say something like this, and then he might say later, he never said it. I see that with atheists all the time, too. Um, but anyway, here's this guy blaming religion for a woman making a horrible mistake and losing her kids because she forgot them in the car and locked them in a hot car. God somehow, belief in God somehow did this to it. I, I, I love how atheists always undercut their own arguments by assuming their own conclusion that God is imaginary. It's like, well, if you want to make a persuasive argument to us, you can't already assume that God is imaginary if, if we don't believe you. So, so the, the argument has no persuasive force for us who don't think that God is imaginary. It just goes back to the fact, though, that hate is really what most atheists, professional atheists, forum runners ha have. Yes, I'm talking to you, Atheist Republic. Hate yes. is on sale for you guys, and it's on sale for you guys all the time. Because I don't believe these are random, weird comments. I mm -hmm. see comments like this all the time from atheists. Yeah. So I don't believe that we have cherry-picked out of context and that this is some sort of aberration for atheist forums. Maybe it is for Atheist Republic, and they'll let us know. I don't yeah. know. And if you keep drumming up that that anti-theistic outrage, uh, where do you expect it to go? You know. Yeah, where where is this rage going to go? Because I'm telling you right now, I will not stop believing in God, and I will not, I yeah. will not. Actually, trying to say you're going to deconvert my kid, those in fact are fighting words. Yeah. Um, those are the things over which revolutions are sometimes fought. People. Yeah. I'm not threatening anything, but I'm telling you straight out: you talk like that, and people reach for guns. Or if they don't reach for guns, they reach for other things. They they work to overthrow a government that acts like that to them. Um, and that's just history. It's not a threat. It's not what I'm telling you I want to do or encourage. I'm telling you, this is where it ends if you keep it up. Um, uh, okay, so now what else do we have? In, so he wants to take away our rights. That's that's what this, this jackass wants to do. He wants to talk like that. If it were any other group, if you were talking about a racial group, would that be okay? Yeah. Um, if you were talking about, hey, what if I, you know, what if I had a rant here about gay people and, and, and butt sex and all the bad things gay people supposedly do, or I made this about black people or about Jews or about Muslims or about atheists? Um, yeah. I well, love how he says another, or, another popular atheist talking point are the studies that say that the uh, irreligious it wasn't even about atheists versus theists but the irreligious have a, a on average like a three IQ point advantage over the over the religious the irreligious have the advantage over the religious uh, which means absolutely nothing as far as the uh, validity of their beliefs but I, I I'm all I know you're old enough to remember the outrage over the uh, movie the bell uh, over the uh, book the bell curve 
when I said that, yo, uh, white people on average have a slightly higher IQ than black people, there was outrage over that. So why, why are you using the exact same rhetoric to assert the superiority of, of the irreligious over the religious? Yo, well, what, just another form. Well, if they're supposedly the liberal ones, right? Yeah. I mean, I will say, and this has become noticeable to me, I didn't see a whole lot of right-wing atheists 10 years ago. I see a lot of right-wing atheists now. Yeah. Um, and that is also thanks to the new atheist explosion, I think, the new atheist fad. Um, and these right-wing atheists, I mean, Richard Spencer, the white nationalist, is an atheist. And, and, and there's a lot of atheist white nationalists now, not just white nationalists, too, Arab nationalists, other forms of nationalists. I, I, I even had one admit to me, I, I was talking about atheists and why they're dangerous, and I had a right-wing nationalist say, we're not dangerous, we just want to help our country. And I said, so does that mean that if you perceive my religion as against the interests of your nation? Yes. What would you, you know, you, you would want to imprison or get rid of me? And he said, well, yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, so religious freedom uh, is not a thing atheists, you know, really believe in. That's the other trend I say amongst atheists. One of the reasons I walked away from the men's rights movement, and one of these days I'm going to do a video on this, is uh, most of them are soft on religious rights, and that's because an awful lot of them are atheists. Most atheists nowadays will say quite clearly they don't think you should be allowed to educate your child religiously at all. It's child. Yeah, that it's child abuse. I will again point out those aren't, that's not just pseudoscience, although it is pseudoscience. Um, and it's not just bigotry, although it is bigotry. Those are actual fighting words. In yeah. fact, I'm not threatening anybody, but I will tell you that if you said that to me in my presence physically, um, I probably wouldn't be in your presence physically anywhere ever again. Yeah. Um, and I would have to restrain myself from punching you in the face. I would have to restrain myself. I mean, I would. I have a Christian duty to do that, to not hit you. But it would be hard not to. And there's plenty of people who aren't as nice as me. Um, uh, and I'd have a hard time gainsaying them. I'm not brainwashing my kids. Sorry. It is rational and evidence-based to believe there is a God. And there is substantial science that also shows that it's healthy to believe yeah. in God. Um, you don't have to pick up the Christian Bible to do that. May I recommend some Plato or yeah. the Tao? Really? And that's, that's the thing. Grip, it goes back, goes back to my uh, Atheist Republic video. They'll, 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 they'll spill a million words about how atheism is rational and, and religious people are irrational, but they won't spare one word to explain why. To, to explain why the idea that God doesn't exist is more rational than the, than the idea that he does exist. Yep, they'll, they'll, they'll blow smoke up their own asses uh, 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 till the cows come home, but they're not going to waste their time actually explaining why God doesn't exist. Tell me why atheism makes you friendly to gay rights. I've come across atheist sources that say we should just murder gays. Um, tell me why atheism would make you not be a, a, a racist, because there's plenty of atheist racists out there, um, some quite prominent. Um, why well, that, that's the thing with this work I was going to say before, not not to cut you off again, but but you see this, I think, as as religion has kind of withdrawn from the public sphere, uh, what you get both on the left and the right is uh, tribalism and identitarianism. Now, uh, on the left, of course, it's like BLM and SJWs and all those people. And on the right, it, it's it's the alt right and and the kind of white nationalist stuff. But that's People are basically deifying race, they're deifying identity into a position where God should be. And, and, so, and so what's, I, I really feel it, it, it's the same thing that's happening on the left and on the right. And you say, oh, well, now there are people on the right who are atheists. Well, yeah, I don't think that's an accident. I, I, I think, I think as, as, as we kind of pull God back from the public sphere, people find other things to deify, one of which is, is race, you know? Hello? My apologies. I was muted for a second there. Yeah, I think 100% of people are religious. I think this can be shown. We do have science showing 100% of humans pray, which is very interesting. I'll go and find that if anybody wants me to find it. But um, uh, now I forgot what other point I was about oh. to make, actually. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's not your fault. Um, 
we do need to be wrapping up. We have been going about an hour anyway. Okay. Um, uh, I want to thank Stan for sending that to me. I was going to try and hang out in the chat room today, but I just wasn't able to get in there. But I thank everybody who joined us in the chat room. And I thank Stan Tarrant for sending me that. Please come to our Facebook group if you're friendly and not a, just a nasty atheist who wants to fight. Uh, it's Escaping Atheism. Uh, Deflating Atheism also has a Facebook group. Right. Go check that out. Um, if you have other cool other stuff you want us to analyze and look at, please send it to us. Uh, probably your best bet the, these days is Facebook, actually. Yeah. I don't like Facebook, but it's probably the best place to drop something for us to look at where we'll see it. Um, Oda, who, Oda St. Oda, who runs the Facebook group, will get it to me if, 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 if I don't see it. She's great. Be nice to her, by the way. Um, and I think that's all we have this week. I, I don't know that I have a grand overarching thing to say, except atheists, is, is it time for you to grow up? You know, if you're running a forum and you've got the atheist logo and you are bringing atheists together plus a few of your select religious friends who won't give you any grief, I'm sorry, you've become an identitarian movement. And you have leaders, you have logos, you have talking points, and you have people who are observable among you. At what point does any of you get a conscience? Does the atheist have a community have a conscience? And if so, where is it and who is it and who represents it? If nobody does, then I'm going to repeat something I've said before. Never trust an atheist. Atheists have no morals. Um, that's a rhetorical statement, but I'll back it up anyway. Atheists have mo no morals. Atheists have no conscience. And there is no conscience in the atheist community. Am I wrong? Show me, Atheist Republic, where you have a conscience mm. and what you base it on. I'd like to know. And friendly atheist and godless engineer, do any of you have a conscience and what's it based on? And is there any morality to be found in the atheist community at all? I'd like to yeah. know. Anything else you want to add, Rob? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good on this end. All right, please join us on Facebook. Please give us a like and a subscribe. Please help us out on Patreon. Also on escapingatheism.com, we have a PayPal tip jar. And we're even looking for volunteers if you want to do things like graphics or, 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 or help us move our forum into other places. Oh, I also wanted to add one last thing. I said this in a re recent interview. Um, escaping atheism, at least, is not explicitly Christian. So if you're a former atheist or have had run-ins with an atheist and you're a Jew, a believing Jew, a neo-pagan, a Hindu, I'll even talk to a white witch. I'll, I'll talk to anybody who's left atheism and wants to talk about their experience with it. We, I, I am doing an interview series like that, so contact me if you're into that. Okay, everybody, give us a like, give a subscribe. Please support us financially, and we'll see you later, okay? Have a good night.